In this video, I'll show you how I created this modular medieval house kit inside Blender and how you can use it to build your own detailed environments quickly and efficiently. We'll start with some behind the scenes theory on how the pack was made, go over a few rules to keep in mind while using it, and then I'll show you how to assemble a full house using the kit. I'll also give you a quick look at how I use this pack in a larger scene. Let's dive right in. Let's talk about why I made this pack in the first place. Creating multiple buildings from scratch is time consuming. Modeling even 10 houses manually can take days, especially if you want them to look different enough from each other. Sure, there are free models online, but matching their style and quality can be a challenge. I've tried using mega scans and even bought a medieval house pack from ArtStation. And while that helped, I ran into some issues. Pre-made houses are great when you want to use them as is, but making changes to their structure or layout can get tricky. They're often not built with customization in mind. That's why I decided to make my own modular kit. With this pack, I can create entirely different looking houses in a fraction of the time it would take to model everything from scratch. Before jumping into modeling, I spent some time gathering inspiration. One strong influence was Lake Town from The Hobbit movies. I really liked how it felt both grounded and stylized, especially with the dense layout, raised walkways, and clustered rooftops. To build a clearer vision, I collected reference images from ArtStation and Pinterest and organized them using Pure Ref. It's a great free tool if you haven't tried it. It let me pin everything into a mood board I could refer back to while working. I also used a medieval house pack I bought from ArtStation. That pack was really helpful, not just for assembling scenes, but also as a reference point. It gave me a concrete idea of the kind of buildings I wanted to be able to create with my own modular kit. All right, let's talk about how I created the pieces for this modular kit. I used a human reference model to check the proportions and get a sense of what height the houses needed to be to feel believable. I dropped in a few cubes to represent the walls and tested out different combinations to see what could I build while still keeping the look realistic. Once I had that figured out, everything else was based on those dimensions. For, for the length of the pieces, I went with even numbers. So two meters, four meters, and six meters. The four meter piece is the base unit and everything else scales around that. When I thought about what pieces to include, I approached it like I was constructing a real house. So the essentials had to be walls and roofs, but I didn't want to have to kit bash a million little details just to make the house look complete. That's why the main parts already have the architectural detailing built in. You can build entire structures with just the core pieces, but I also wanted customization to be possible, so I included optional elements, things like supports, roof extensions, and other pieces, bits that you can attach wherever you need to tweak the silhouette or add extra character. For snapping, I used a one meter by one meter grid. I also paid attention to the origin points based on the function of each piece. For example, a roof end has its origin in the middle, so you can rotate it around and still keep it modular. Wall pieces, on the other hand, have their origins at the corner, so rotating them 90 degrees still snaps them to the same grid position. Now, for the texturing part, I kept it pretty simple at the start. I grabbed a few tiling textures from Megascans that I'd later combine using my custom material setup. This setup is a blend of multiple tileable textures mixed with grayscale masks made in Substance Painter. To make this work properly, I needed two UV channels one for the tileable textures where UV islands can overlap, and one for the masks where they can't. The tileable texture UVs were unwrapped using box projection and I just rotated any faces that looked misaligned. For the masks, I used Smart UV Project, then packed the islands using UV Packmaster to get the most efficient layout possible. Since all the masks share one texture map, I went with a 4K resolution to maintain decent texel density across all the parts. Inside Painter, I used generators to create different grayscale masks, things like dirt, edgeware, and moss. Once those were exported, I packed them into the red, green, and blue channels of a single image in Photoshop. Back in Blender, I split those channels again and used them to drive different effects in the material. All right, so let's put the pack to use and build a house from scratch. The pieces are already in the scene file, so I'll just grab what I need and start laying them out. I'm using Blender's Snap to increment. It's not turned on by default, but when I move something by pressing G and hold Ctrl, it'll snap nicely to the grid. 
The whole pack is designed around a 1 meter by 1 meter grid, so snapping is always clean and precise. I usually begin by choosing where the door will go. That sets the main entry and helps me figure out the layout. Then I start building out the corners of the house to establish the overall shape. Here's a little trick I use all the time to speed things up. I add an empty object to the center of the scene and then on one of the corner wall pieces, I add a mirror modifier using the empty as the mirror object. I enabled both X and Y axes and now I've got all four sides of the house from just one corner piece. It's completely non-destructive, so if I want to resize the house later, I only need to change one side. Once I've got that base shape, I figure out where I want the windows and fill in the rest of the walls. The taller wall segments are meant for ground floors, while the shorter ones work better for upper stories, just to keep everything feeling grounded and realistic. The roof segments come in three sizes and are designed to work right out of the box. They're based on earlier tests I did to make sure the final shape looks natural and proportionate. And once that structure is in place, I go in and add decorative elements to give it a bit more personality. Now, let's talk a bit about customization. There are a few easy ways to push the look further. First, displacement maps are included in the textures.rayr file. You can plug these into the displacement input of the shader. Just remember, for displacement to actually work, you'll need to add more geometry to the roofs. Next up, switching tileable textures. The material setup in the file is fully organized, named, and color-coded, so it's easy to find what you're looking for. Just dive into the material and swap out the texture inputs for any layer you want to change. If you want to paint your own masks, you can do that directly in Blender. Let's say you want to change just one object. Start by making a unique instance of the material, then unplug the generated mask for the layer you want to override. Add a new image texture node, create a blank black texture, and switch to the texture paint workspace. Make sure your new image is selected, and then just paint with a white brush where you want the effect to appear. Just don't forget, Blender doesn't save painted textures by default. So when you're done, go to the image editor, select the painted texture, and hit image and save as to make sure you don't lose it. All right, so here's a render I made using this kit. Everything you've seen in this video went into building this scene, from the modular walls and roofs to the smaller decorative details. And if you want to see what this looks like on a larger scale, I recently published a time lapse where I used the pack to construct an entire fishing village. It shows how easily the pieces come together and how quickly you can block out a full scene once you get into the flow. I'll link that in the description if you're curious to check it out. You can grab the pack through the Gumroad link in the description and if you end up using it in your own work, I'd love to see what you come up with. Feel free to tag me or drop a comment. If you found this helpful, a like or a share really helps spread the word. More tutorials and breakdowns are on the way, so feel free to stick around. See you in the next one.